Welcome to round 4 of the Canada's 2024 bot edition and we start with a game of Caruana because Caruana is leading with 3 points playing against Kukesh bot with the white pieces and we get a Karo Khan defense with bishop to g4 pinning the knight here Caruana attacks the bishop and takes and takes back e6 Quite a stable position for black, but black is not really developed yet and needs to start working on that. And of course, Caruana wants to capitalize on that with the move b4, attacking the only developed piece. And if you take, well, rook b1 is strong and black has some problems here. Queen, queen to e7 and here Caruana attacks the other side of the board g7 is now weak and the best move in this position now would have been to simply take on c3 because you protect this square for a moment if you take back then f5 and if takes takes back with a check and you have to move back the queen and you can for example trade queens in this position and this would have been equal for both players instead kukesh played knight to f6 and now this pawn hangs but instead you get some counterplay with rook to g8 the queen has to go to h6 escaping through this diagonal and now here kukesh decides to take the knight in the end and these two pawns are quite weak but the bishop is now also freed up for this diagonal rook goes forward queen to e3 and now kukesh decides to take the pawn Bishop to g2, not a good move because you basically move into the spin. Knight to d5, already trying to get to this square. Queen moves forward. Well, if you would go here, you simply chop it off with the bishop, of course. So you would not make use of the pin on the bishop over here. But the move e5 is strong. The queen has to move, goes to c4. And now you can go f5, attacking the weak position of Caruana's king. What is he going to do? Queen moves back, trying to attack from this side. Knight d7, bishop to a3. And here a very big blunder by Kukesh, knight to c5. Pinning his own knight to the queen. Never do that. Don't do that at home. And instead... Caruana should have simply taken and after take back you go on the attack with queen to b7 but since Caruana did not do that and played c4 here Gukesh thought to capitalize on the pin of the bishop but that is a big blunder because here you have sh should have simply taken the knight and after takes back well you go on the attack again and you have to move your rook and this is an active position for white and you take now the pawn so you cannot take this bishop well you can of course but if the knight goes back then you can simply take it because it's also protecting the rook instead g takes f4 you take the bishop and now caruana moves his queen here attacking the knight twice what is Gukes going to do well he has a better position and plays a move b6 the only move to protect the knight takes takes better would have been to take back with the queen but Gukes feels like he's having a good day and, and, and takes back with the pawn king f1 look at this this is a very good foul this rook is active here quite double-edged so an interesting game and let's see how it will peter out Rook here, the exchange of rooks, king takes back and here king to f7, trying to get some safety as the queen cannot easily attack from this side. Takes a pawn and now with the check you also prevent the queen from going here perhaps. King to f1 and king to e6. Further escaping from any checks and perhaps later on also picking up the pawn with the king. King to e2 and indeed taking the pawn and Caruana here has five pawns, Gukesh six. 
So, and these pawns are both doubled, of course. And the king of black is quite active, but also vulnerable for checks from the queen, which is quite close by. Queen c3 check, immediately a check, going back. Queen e3 and queen to e7, threatening to give a check here and perhaps taking this pawn in some moment. Rook to e1, and here the check follows, and king to d2 is a big blunder. Instead, Karana should have gone to f1, perhaps counterintuitive, but that was the best move. Instead of that, he played king to d2, and now queen to g5, going for the queen trade. And that's why it was such a big blunder, because after takes takes, good cash is active, has two great pawns, and is completely winning in this position. Yes, Caruana attacking this pawn, but Gukesh defends it. Rook to a6, defending as well. And now these pawns will start moving at some point. And what about this pawn? You can simply gobble up this pawn at some point. Takes, and then the king goes up. You also could have taken this pawn, but it's better to get active. Attack this pawn. How are you going to defend it? Because you will get in with the rook. A4. You cannot really take this pawn because then this pawn hangs, of course. Well, you could, but a better move is king. A better move is rook to g2. And now you protect the pawn. Now you could have taken actually this pawn. And white could have taken here. Then you could have taken here as well. And this is still winning. But Kukash plays it a bit more accurate and gives a check first. And now goes here. He's completely winning. And in this position, Caruana Bot resigned. The leader lost a game against Kukash. Abasov with the white pieces against Feruja Bot. E4, C5. A Sicilian. Knight C3. Okay, let's develop here. Knight to F6. D3. A6, A4. Trying to prevent the progress of black on this side of the board e6 quite a common move in this kind of position castles bishop to e6 knight to f4 and castles some more moves and finally in the end abasov decides to take here takes back and here abasov makes a wrong judgment he decides to take the knight giving away his bishop pair but don't do that. Just play bishop to a2 and play the position. Keep your bishop pair. This one is very strong. This one, perhaps move it back. You know, it has a good diagonal. Great bishops. But if you exchange it, then black really solved this issue. Because this bishop was quite poor, but now has a great diagonal here. And this will be a long term, term theme and threat in white's camp. This bishop together with the queen at some point. Here... Abasov managed to get the bishop back though and after move b6 and rook to e1 bishop e7 so more shuffling of pieces and here queen to e3 black is basically better right this bishop is strong perhaps this bishop will rejoin this diagonal with the queen later on this knight has a nice square here or here at some point the rook will move to the center maybe h6 Bishop d6, finally joining the queen on the diagonal, aiming at h2, c3, the rook going there, and yeah, g3, really protecting against these threats. What if white still would have his black squared bishop? And here bishop to e7, going back from the diagonal, not the best move, but the wrong move in this position from Abasov is to move d4, basically giving up any options in this position better would have been queen to f4 just keep on playing the position trying to trade off queens you're still worse but you have some fighting spirit left but here after the move d4 you simply give up material if here Frugia would have played knight takes you simply win a pawn but instead here Frugia plays bishop to f6 attacking the pawn once more Abbas of defense and Ferruja doesn't take because yeah, you don't really want to take because then bishop to e6 because there's a nice x-ray on the queen so 
rook here. Better would have been to put the queen here to get it out of range of this x-ray at some point. Bishop to f1, setting up the x-ray. And that's also, of course what Free just saw. Takes the pawn here. It's of course not with the knight. Takes back, rook takes. Okay, Ferugia won a pawn. Great, rook to c4. Knight to b4. Here, Abasov has a nice use of the x-ray trying to win this bishop. Do you see how? Yes, knight to a5. You attack the queen, and when the queen moves, you win the bishop. And this bishop was super strong. So that's a great deal for Abasov. Rook c3. White is still lost in this position, but not as bad as it has been. Queen to d7, rook here to double up the rooks. But here the queen simply takes this pawn. And as you can see, yeah, Firuja has six pawns and Abasov has four pawns. So this is winning for Firuja. After rook c8, Firuja decided to bring back the queen to protect the rook also and also protect this rook. The other rook came in. But now you can simply move your queen forward or take here. Because after takes, you simply take back the rook and you have two rooks for the queen. Instead of the queen d6, h4, queen f8, bishop to e2, and a5, Ferugia stabilizes this side of the board. And will in the end promote one of these pawns. Perhaps, let's see. Rook takes, rook to b7. Knight to d5, protecting this pawn. And at some point, this pawn will go forward, like this pawn will do as well. Queen to e5, queen to d6, trying to go for the exchange. And yeah, this is completely winning for black with two extra pawns. And this is also where Abasov resigned the position. And that brings us to the third game of the round. Nakamura bot against Pragnananda bot. d4, knight f6. Moving into a King's Indian defense. Not very common in the candidates, but done here anyways by Prague. And see the center already by Nakamura. Great center. And he will, of course, try to capitalize on that. D6. And here, castles. In these kind of positions, Black wants to push either this pawn or this pawn to counter the strong center of white. See how Prague does us here with e5 countering the center and now white needs to make a decision will you go forward will you take will you leave it like this and just castle well here nakamara takes and prague takes back not the best idea the better idea would have been to just castle but nakamura clearly wants to change it up and take the pawn and here you don't really want to take the queen because then you take back and rook has a very active file here so instead, you castle and trade on your own terms. If Prague would take it, then you will get the open file. So always, if you have a queen trade, do it on your own terms. Great. And Prague also decides not to take and plays knight to c6. Here, Nakamura had a very active option with bishop to g5. Instead, goes to e3. A bit more passive, but still completely fine. Then, bishop to e6. Attacking this pawn but for example in a moment you can defend it with b3 and of course it is already defended with the bishop instead Nakamura plays the move h3 perhaps progressing with g4 at some point h6 and here Nakamura attacks the pawn which just moved forward attacking the weakness and Prague moves in the knight a better move would have been King to h7. And here, for example, after rook d1, you would play back the knight. This pawn is being attacked, this pawn is being attacked, but everything is still being defended. Instead, after the move knight to d4, it's a bit more difficult. So you can, for example, play rook to d1, what Nakamura also did, pinning the knight to the queen. And here, Prague takes on e2. For example, you also could have gone for king to h7. And remember that also this pawn is being attacked, this pawn is being attacked. So it's quite of a complex situation. And here Prague takes on e2 with a check 
and of course Nakamura takes back. Now the queen is being attacked, so you have to move away the queen, and now you attack two pawns, both the h6 pawn and also the e5 pawn. So Nakamura has the opportunity here to win the pawn, and he decides to take on h6. Here, Prague perhaps should have taken back on h6 with the bishop, and after takes, well, you can, for example, take the pawn here, and for example, play knight to g3, defending this pawn which was being attacked. Still much better for white, but somewhat holding. Instead, here, Prague placed the move knight takes on e4. This is a blunder. Why? Well, you now take the bishop, and when you take back the bishop, then you have queen e3 attacking the knight and also the pawn behind it. Maybe you think about f5, but you weaken then the king position so much. And knight to g3 would be a good move here. But instead, Prague decided to play back the knight, and now this pawn simply hangs. The rook joins the game, and c5 kicks away the knight. Prague needs to make a decision. Where does this knight go to? And f5 is a logical square attacking the queen, and it seems like this is a good position for the knight. Queen here. See this x-ray attack? Very dangerous, so black needs to act and plays the move f6. Not a good move. The best move would have been to put the queen in between and to go for the queen trade if this knight ever moves. But f6, yeah, opening up the king's position somewhat, creating another weakness along this file. Knight to g4, attacking the pawn, but it's also defended twice. And g5. Now, a4. Nakamura tries to expand on this side. The b pawn will join as well and create some more attacking options. So when you attack, always try to attack on both sides of the board. And that's something which Nakamura does in this game very well. And I also have a video on how to attack, so check it out. Rook joins the party and b4 indeed attacking on this side of the board as well. With these pawns moving forward at some point. Bishop to f7, not a good move. Better would have been to simply take the rook and in this position play c6. Stopping the advance of the pawns. At some point this will come, but Nakamura is still much better in this position. But after bishop to f7 it is rather easy for nakamura to finish he plays the rook here setting up the x-ray on the queen and this pawn is super vulnerable right attacked by the queen and by the knight and perhaps this knight will join as well the bishop moves here and now you have x-ray moving here and going here in the end the queen goes aside and indeed moving your knight here instead Prague moves his knight here looking for a knight fork on e2. Nakamura ignores it and takes on f6 and we see what happens because this is a beautiful sequence. Knight check, you take of course the knight, rook takes and now you have nice discoveries over here. That's what Nakamura does, knight to e4 check, king has to move aside and now you bring in the other knight attacking the queen and the bishop at the same time. For example, if you would play here now to move queen to g7, escaping the attack from the knight, then there's a beautiful sequence with a check. And the king goes forward. If you, for example, would take the knight, then that's queen f3 check. And for example, after queen f7, you win the rook. So this is an important detail. And that's why Prague didn't take the knight moved the king forward to f7, but now you move back the knight with a check, king goes to e8, and now you have to look for a good discovery. The black queen is not being protected and is being x-rayed with the knight and the queen, and there is a super nice move here, knight to c6. If you take the queen, what Prague did, you take back the queen and you attack both rooks. So if you take this knight, then this rook hangs. So that's why instead of this sequence, Prague took on e4, and here giving away his queen, Nakamura takes a queen, bishop takes back, and now c6, basically opening up this position. b6, these pawns are now very weak, especially c7, but also a7 as soon as c7 falls. And a check on the side of the board, basically aiming to grab up this pawn with the move queen to g7. 
And after a6, you take the pawn and in this position, Prague resigned. Great win for Nakamura. And when he needs to, Nakamura capitalizes and wins his game. Very important win. Then the last game of the round, Nepobot against Fittedbot. e4, c5, a Sicilian. We haven't seen them too much. Knight to f3, bishop to b5, and we move into a Rosolimo attack. Here, g6, castles, and then bishop to g7, eyeing on the b2 square, and this bishop is very strong on this diagonal already. Takes, takes back, and here the move rook to e1, perhaps pushing at some point. Here, fitted place to move rook to b8, attacking this pawn twice, but it's a bit slow. Instead, you should develop because this rook is already eyeing your king. So knight to f6 would be the best move here. But after the move rook to b8, here Nepo develops. Instead, he should have gone for e5, immediately block blocking off the diagonal of this bishop. But instead, knight to c3. Now the move d6. Instead, he should have gone for the move e5, preventing this pawn to move. But instead, here, d6, now Nepo goes e5, opening up the position. And it's very strong because black is underdeveloped with these pieces and the king. Bishop takes. Ooh, that's not a good move. Instead, he should have chosen to develop and castle. But bishop takes, knight takes, pawn takes. And here, yeah, well, if you take with the rook, then, for example, queen d6. Could have been a good option with queen e1 attacking this square. And there's a strong position for white. Instead, Nepo decided to first develop the queen attacking this weak square. But queen e6 is a good move protecting both this pawn and this pawn. Here, knight e4 attacking the queen and this pawn as well. You see these weaknesses in black's camp, right? Also, the f7 square is very weak at this point. Queen goes forward and the move d3. Yeah, of course, this queen is being x-rayed and black would love to trade off queens in a position where you're underdeveloped. F5, not the best move. Better would have been bishop to f5, attacking the knight and basically making sure that there will be some trades. For example, after b3, you can simply take and when takes, you take the queen and the rook comes in. Still, white is much better here because of all these weaknesses. Instead, the move f5, here Nepo retreats, and the thing is that this king is already weak, f7 is already a weakness, and with the move f5 you have weakened your position even further, while your knight is not developed. Which is now after knight to f6, queen to e2, attacking this pawn, you can defend it with the knight for example, but then you will block also the, the development of this bishop, you can go here, but you can simply push it away. Here, the move e4, and now you can simply take the pawn and take basically everything. That's also what happened. And here, Napo has a very good position with a loose pawn on the e-file, these double pawns, and look at this pawn structure of Napo. Perfect. Bishop here, moving to c4, attacking this pawn and defending the c2 pawn at the same time. Great move. Rook f8, bringing the rook into the game. And now b3 making sure that you can develop your bishop because now this pawn is not being attacked anymore. King to f7 and developing the bishop. Yeah, this pawn will fall sooner or later. h5 and bring the rook into the game, waiting to take the pawn. You will do it now. Good, moving back. And as you can see, Napo is up a pawn and still has the better pawn structure. Look at these pawn islands, horrible f3 taking away more squares from the bishop great move i also have a video on how to play with the bishop pair and taking away key squares of the bishop so putting your pawns on the same square of the bishop is one of those so great choice by napo moving in the rook now the move g4 attacking the bishop so it also has to retreat and it does because if you take take you still have to go back at this point but he goes back right away and rook to f4 check the king goes back now you trade some pawns and creating another pawn island four pawn islands 
Rook takes now on e7. This pawn was simply hanging. Check and take the rook and retreating with the bishop. Here, the best move would have been rook to c4 again, attacking the pawn, also protecting this pawn and perhaps going to the h file at some point. But that's not what Napo did. Decided to go c4, but now with a check, the a pawn falls, but still Napo gives a check. And here, Fidet gives a check. The king has to choose because it cannot go here or here. So it basically needs to let go of this pawn and takes the pawn. And because of that, also this pawn falls. And the king goes back to g3. Rook h3 check. King goes to g2. And yeah, in this position, the bishop has to move. Goes to f5 and then this pawn hangs. It took a while for Napo to convert after this, but Napo converted and with these two extra pawns won the game. Great game and he needed it. And a terrible loss for Vida. That brings us to the standings. After round four, both Caruana and Ferruja with three points in the lead. Then on the second place, three people, Napo, Hikaru and Gukesh with two points. And then we have Vidit and Gukesh with one and a half points. And last, Abasov with one point. Will he get off the one point at some point? Let's see. Check it out and stay tuned for round number five.